so this will be my talk short, and it goes with James is going to do the other bit, which is what you can do with the 3D printers here. And this is just a bit to encourage you to build your own 3D printer, which is what Simon Cook and I did. I'm a software engineer by profession, I'm not a hardware engineer. Um, so this is really just that we did it with um, the Thames Valley Rep Rap user group, and we did it because it was just when SoMaker was get go getting going. And, uh, Thames Valley already had a well-established program of building their own printer, so you pay them a certain amount of money, of which, of course, you then come back to the motor space, and a big box of parts arrives, and basically, that's what we're trying to build. That's the nice diagram from the documentation. The nice thing about RepRaps, if you want to build one, there's so many people building, there is a fantastic amount of resource. It really is step-by-step -step guides the house good. So here's how we go. You start out with a whole load of uh, threaded steel bars, lots of M8 steel, nuts and bolts, and the thing that you start off with is someone gives you a box like this. So if you pass that round, those are all the plastic bits, and about 60% of the rep wrap is printed on another rep wrap. Um, and so you thread the, you use the steel bars, which are the frame, um, to hold these together. We haven't got a rep wrap here, have we? No. Um, so um, you start putting it together, you build a frame, you start putting it together, and it takes you, it doesn't take a long time. This We did this over several evenings. We tried not to let it encroach into the day because we have a real job to do. Um, and slowly built up the frame. So you start putting your Meccano together, and there are all sorts of nice little bits here. The way that you have pieces that sort of push onto the metal bars, so they sort of, they're a push fit, and then you screw a couple of bolts and nuts in each side to hold them tight, and then they won't pop off again. Uh, but that's very flexible, you don't have to sort of thread everything onto the bars, you can push them off from the side. Uh, as it gets bigger, you start putting things like motors in, so this is the motor that is going to, we're looking at the, the uh, back of the thread, and this is a motor that's going to drive a belt, to, the belt that goes on that two cog there, that will pull the bed back and forwards. There's going to be another motor that goes, takes the head side by side, and there's motors that will drive it up and down. And this is an example of how you connect the motors. These are standard um, stepper motors. They're, they're um, reasonably powerful, because you've got to actually be able to accelerate quite fast if you're going to be able to sort of print at a decent rate. And here we have a 3D junction we put a piece of um, plastic tubing around the end of the motor. We've got an MA thread there. We have a two pieces of plastic, and we put bolts through the side, and that clamps it, and that's how we connect the motor to the thread. The twist around here is the equivalent of this bit here, that is turning to drive the motor head up and down. Um, and then there's an electronics board. Um, in our case, I put a cut piece of wood and stuck it on the end of the printer to mount the electronics, but you can mount it where you will. So we put it all together, and the very last thing you have to do, you'll see it's, oh here it is, we pass it round, uh, yeah, you have a little ceramic heater, which is what heats the head up to melt the plastic. So we started this in October, and we got it working in December, but that was working in evenings when we were in the office, because we travelled a bit. So it's, if you've done one before, it will probably take you a few order of eight hours to build one. If you haven't done it before, it's about 24 hours because you sort of worry that you've got the right fit and you're doing it the right way. Um, for, this, for this particular one, the, the, the TV rub, the, um, they have their own circuit board. One of their guys is an electronics designer. He designed this circuit board and you have to solder it up yourself. That's the, one, the hardest thing there. This is not a beginner's soldering job. It is all through a hole. But if you've never used a soldering iron before, do one or two things first before you try this one. It's incredibly well documented. There's an image for every component, showing where it goes on the board, describing it with a big red circle around it. And so, you, can, it, you know, if you follow the step by step, it's very hard to get wrong. But there's quite a lot of it. Um, so we did all that electronics and put it on. And we end up, and this is our printer, it's sitting, that was taken this afternoon, it's sitting in the corner of the office. And this is our very first print. We, um, we posted that, we get it, and it's a little house. It's a test print, and we did a half size one. And you know, it's a bit rough and bobbly. And you know, 
the first thing you do is you set your head off and you do a little bead just to get the plastic flowing through the balloon. And that's how it will be going around the outside. So that's our very first piece of um, 3D printing. Now, this I think is a video. Yes, okay. This is about adjustment. You can see this is before we put it properly adjusted. It's shaking, it's shaking all over the place. Okay, this is supposed to be level, smoothly resting on here, but because it's out of balance, it's wobbling all over the place. So that was a little video Simon took right at the beginning. And it doesn't do that anymore. You have to make sure that all the bolts are tightened up, everything's, all the triangles have got the right length. Um, uh, and there is a real art to it. It's not a particular science, and there are huge numbers of web pages that tell you how to tune up a rep rack. And every so often it goes out of tune, and then out come the Allen keys and the spanners, and you just tweak it a bit and try and get it a bit better. I think you've got your belt inside up too, the teeth are on the outside. Um, that's, I think, a twisted belt, and it's not driving off there, that's the free wheeling one. Okay, so you know, it really, no, 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 we, we have done that, but in this case, that is the right belt. <laughs> that, that is actually the right belt, that one. Um, and that was one of the things that meant it took 24 hours, not 8 hours. A huge sort of discussion, which way is it going this way, this way, because it wasn't clear to me. And what I've just thrown up here is just a few things, because once you get a 3D printer, you do your first toy, and you watch, shall I use it for? And then you get into the habit of using it. So my wife had this nice little 12 volt uh, bedside lamp that she's very fond of, and the, the switch broke after a year or so. And I obviously couldn't get the manufacturer's nice shaped switch, but I could get a toggle switch. And then I designed a little piece of plastic to put the toggle switch in so it fits nicely in there. She's got her light back again. Um, the tools always get everywhere. I'm in the middle of a program to print myself little things so every tool hangs on something that just fits it. If you're into Minecraft, you can build yourself a creeper. Um, we do a lot of research into energy efficient computing. Um, uh, that's our, our day job. And that involves measuring vast numbers of Atmel chips, they're actually Arduinos to get statistical significance on the energy measurement. And we had loads of these, and they're all lying on tables pinned together. We thought, no, let's put them on boards so they don't wobble about. And I need to hold the board still. And so we printed these, which just go on the edge of each board, and you put screw down, and you screw the boards down to a, a thing. Um, the one in the middle, we um, were involved with the parallel project, so that's a parallel cluster, which is 128 floating point processors. Um, running on a desktop, it's very, very low power, um, but that's uh, 100 teraflops uh, sitting in there. Um, uh, sorry, 100, no, 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 sorry, no, I'm going to go, 100 gigabytes. Um, but sorry, it's, uh, sorry, sorry, teraflops, I'd be, I wouldn't be here if I'm about 100 teraflops. <laughs> it's 100 gigabytes, but more importantly, it's only 30 watts, which is the interesting thing. It does get hot, though, not because of the epiphany chips in there, but because there's a small arm there controlling them, and having a stack of eight arm processors does overheat, so we will really print a little fan to blast air through it and cool it down, which has actually been taken up by loads of people who are doing this. Uh, I can't bring it along because it's sitting in the office in use. Um, here's another one. I thought I'd find a bargain. I've got these really cheap HD monitors, and so we all have two monitors each. And then they arrived and we realised they were cheap because they weren't monitors, they were televisions and they were unadjustable, and, we need, and they were sort of too far forward. We needed to tip them back. So what we did was we printed these little 3D curved pieces. We have a whole set depending on how much you want it tilted back. And they just clip under the front, and this is where my administrator's desk, and she's got one of these still, and it's propped up there with a couple of those. And have a look at those. <laughs> <laughs> um, some other things we've done. Laptop stand, that's very useful by, by things. So that's just so we can have the screen up next to the other screen and it raises the height. Um, We've got, we do a lot of work with high performance computing, and we've got a supercomputing node. It's only got two elements in it, but it's so we can prove things out. And it has a Xeon Phi in it. And we mistakenly, by talking to our colleagues who build these 100,000 core things, they said, oh, we just use passively cooled ones. Of course, they've got women heating in their racks, and we didn't. So we then found that we were overheating, and we had to blast air through it somehow. And what we did was we designed this. This is the previous version of the real ones in the machine, which you can clamp a high performance fan there, a very noisy fan, and that goes on the end of the Xeon Fire graphics coprocessor uh, with 60 cores in it, and it blasts air through it, and that manages to keep it cool enough that we can run it in the office. We have to run it in a separate room and shut the door because of the noise of the fan. Um, but that wouldn't be possible. Um, 
Uh, that's a stand for one plus one smartphone. All our smartphones have got little stands like that, so the USB lead goes in there and just stand on your desk. Um, this is a display. I was, I was going off to a conference. I hadn't got a stand-up display anywhere, so I just 3D, 3D printed myself a little stand. I was put it in, and that's been an exhibition around the world. Um, I get really annoyed with travel bugs punching through the sides of my bags. So there's a little uh, cover for one. And this is a project which we've only just started, and it's a proof project. My son is into plane aircraft, and we did wonder if it would be possible to 3D print on a rep rack a complete working aircraft. Now, it's not a sensible thing to do because it's not the right material for most things, but it's a proof of concept. This is high impact polystyrene. It prints rather like ABS. Um, it's soluble in uh, limonene, which is the, the oil that makes oranges and lemons smell. Um, but a really interesting thing is, one, it doesn't shrink very much, so it tends not to split. And second, it's incredibly light. So that's intended to be an aircraft about that long. We've only built one section, and we haven't got it quite light. It's too thin. We just feel how light that is. Um, so that's just for the show and tell to show you everything. I think that's really done. Oh, no, I've got one more thing. The one thing we did do yeah. is our local, the one person in Livington who actually understands what we do is the local vicar because he used to be an open source so engineer. <laughs> and in fact, when you came to this Christmas service this year, he always brings in his Christmas present and puts it in front of the church with a 3D printer this year. Anyway, um, the, um, we were, he was worried that we weren't getting enough. You know, how do you get men to come to Sunday school. It's always mums bring their kids along. Let's put a 3D printer in there. So we took our 3D printer into the Sunday school and suddenly all the dads wanted to come to church. And of course, you're in your Sunday school, you print little crosses like this and you're welcome to do keep these because I've got them coming out of my ears if you want to have a look. Um, so all the kids have got these and the nice thing is, of course, it's a must-have thing in the schools in Limington. So I have other kids, oh, I didn't come to church, can I have one of your 3D printed crosses? Oh, cool. And if you see the Bishop of Southampton, He's got one as well. He's got a double sign as well. Uh, so, so, the of, so when you next see the Bishop of Southampton, say, so I think you've got the 3D printed back. So that's the last thing. So that's all the things we've done. But I think the message from that is, it's not difficult building one of these things. And once you get it, it's amazing what sort of things you find it's really useful for. And thank you very much. While I pack up, I'm having to take a couple of questions, but I have to go and dash and hop on my bike and catch a train. I shall be back here tomorrow. And tomorrow I'm not doing 3D printing. I'm running a soldering workshop. You can solder your own little Arduino. That's a cuttlefish. If you're a bit more experienced, we've got, for the second time only, the first round is a week or two ago, the seahorse, which is also an Arduino. It's designed as wearables. It's got an infrared transmitter and receiver on it, as well as LEDs. And anyone who wants to have a go making those, you can do tomorrow afternoon. Okay. Thank you. If we can get the bits back around here, I've got to pack up and go. And I'd really like the box of spares because I don't want to go. Thank you very much.